What is up, buds? Welcome to We D and D V Pot Positive Live Tabletop Role Playing Experience. I am your dungeon master for the night, Brandon Allen McClenahan. But my buds call me Bam. And holy crap, buds! We freaking love you guys, man. Huge shout out to the Buds community. It is because of all of you guys, your stalwart support, the subs, the tips, the bits, the, the all the, the support, the reposts, the, the comments on videos and showing up, just being here with us, having a good time. It is because of you that we've been able to keep this flame bright, bur ah, burning so brightly as long as we have. So my sincere thank you to the amazing Buds community. Uh, a little bit of a sour uh announcement unfortunately we will be the main campaign will be dark next weekend uh all of us just it, so, we tried very hard to make this happen every week but sometimes we're all just everybody's doing badass awesome shit and we can't all get together and do uh, our badass awesome shit at the same time so we're taking one week and you know we get a week off we can't you know it's like come on now like watch television like, how often is john oliver not on television he's off he's on break more than he's ever on the tv so in the in the in the in the way of john oliver folks uh, we will be uh, we will be dark next week. Don't worry. We will uh, maybe something fun will happen. I never like to say, but uh, but the main campaign itself will be dark for the next week, and then we will be back blowing the fucking doors off again the week after. So thank you guys. Honestly, our community rocks. Everybody is fucking sweet. Obviously, everybody every creator loves their community and stuff. I just have to say it is very rare in this day and age to find a corner of the internet where almost just pretty much every single point of conversation or discourse is positive, uplifting, supportive, and wonderful. So thank you guys of the people of this community for fostering such a wonderful environment. It means the world to us that we can have a little space like that to offer people who just want to have a good time, meet some chill buds, and, uh, you know, collectively just get through this thing together. So thank you guys so much for all you do. Check us out over on the YouTube where we just hit a milestone. We are now over 100 videos on our YouTube channel. And... That's right on Twitch here, which is where we are live most Tuesdays at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it is it is here. We have surpassed 250 hours of streaming, which, uh, wow, man, look at that. Look at that. The minutes watched will get me, but I forgot the exact number right now. But it's it's well over 50,000, which is pretty exciting. Um, so thank you guys just for being along for this amazing journey with us, man. It's been such a treat. And I got to tell you, it's just going to keep getting honors. So uh, keep coming by for some of this fresh fire. Uh, I, I do just want to jump right in. We have a little bit of limited time today, unfortunately. Again, we're just, we got we got conflicts right now. We got, we're all busy folks. Uh, we are going to be a little shorter tonight. And then again, we'll be dark next week. But then we'll be back in, in our full force the following one after that. Uh, I do uh, want to jump right in and hang out with some of my favorite uh, human beings in the entire world here. So I'm going to take this joint, pass it through the magical fibers of the interwebs to my dear and wonderful friend, Brenna Folger. Hey, Brenna. How you doing, girl? Hit shit. <laughs> hey, I'm doing great, fam. It's so excited to be so exciting to be back this week. I'm fucking stoned and I'm ready to fucking turn this snake into bones. Um, there's pickles on we, your cuddle forge monk. I'm a teddy bear and I'm ready to share this guy. Um, hey, Abby, um, what is your favorite noise? And what is your least favorite noise? <laughs> so like my favorite noise, actually, I want to steal from uh, Conan O'Brien was once asked this question and his answer was an egg dropping in milk. And I <laughs> just love <laughs> that idea. <laughs> so I'm just going to have that be that as well. Cause I, <laughs> cause I oh, really so good. That. Um, and my least favorite noise is like, um, when an animal goes like, like yelps, like, like in video games where you have to like shoot the dog, like the last of us too. I was like, what are you doing? How dare you? I love it again. I'm like crying the whole time. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Or like, I don't kill wolves in like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I'm don't like, do I don't, it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my least favorite. Abby, how about you girl? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what up? It's your boy, Dabby Andy. AKA Abby Dandy, but like, let's, uh, Abby, Dabby and Dabby Andy, oh. AKA Amaryllis Von Shucks, the level three team length also rants, what's up, what's up? Okay, I've been thinking about sounds. I've been, I've been thinking. Um, 
my least favorite sound is probably like when you accidentally like scratch your nail on something and it makes like that chalkboard <laughs> sound, you know, kind of a basic one. And my favorite sound is also going to be basic. Um, it's kind of a combo though. So we're going to elevate it. Like, you know, the, the iced coffee sound when you, you switch, I'm a queer, you know, so like, yes. that's like my favorite song. Uh, <laughs> but also to be combined with the cracking of a really buttery croissant. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about you, Druby? What's your favorite sound? Oh, thank you, baby girl. Me. Uh, what up, y'all? Drew. Dig bag mo Lickington the third. <laughs> uh, my favorite sound. No, just kidding. Uh, I'm going to get deep on y'all. Uh, my favorite sound is laughter. It's contagious. It's it's the most honest thing that we are as a species that we can share regardless of our backgrounds and our futures. It's the most beautiful thing that I've ever heard. Not math. My least favorite sound is bam. Uh, <laughs> Just in general. Telling me about <laughs> bam. No, no. My least favorite sound is uh, is pain. There's a sound to pain, like true, not just ah, I burn myself. Like that deep, like hearing someone whimper. You know what I mean? Because they're just they cannot find any kind of way out. And I've been around it a lot in my life, and it sucks. So. That's how deep I'm going. Uh, before I start crying, Jake. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of suffering? No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Jeez. Um, yeah. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Jake Taylor here, as I was about to say, Riel Offerbahn. Not this time. It's Gary Greenheart. <laughs> Level three paladin, stout halfling. And yeah, this prompt has really got me thinking. Um, I think my favorite sound is raindrops, especially if it's on like a metal surface, like the tick, 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 tick. like, but rain in general, like that gets the win. Least favorite sound would be Jake, you're frozen. <laughs> Oh, and he has to hear it oh. so much. <laughs> oh, no. Jake, you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> but frozen. <laughs> oh, my butt's frozen. It's the worst. <laughs> I've got a deeper one, but I don't want to hold this up or anything like that. So I just want to know what sound. Fucking tease. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week to find out Jake's other favorite song <laughs> for Darkness Week. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just that, the right? sound. Yeah, it's, it's just, just for, it's for just the Jake two talking about it and like. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's man. actually one of my favorite sounds. Is... <laughs> but but does guests like that? <laughs> oh shit! Thank you very much, Jake. That's right. I am your boy, Gus Two Blunts Langley. The human form of the fire emoji. Um, <clears throat> 100. What? Uh, all right. Well, I'll, today I'll be playing Dickens Tangle Face, the clown kin cleric of Glorp. Um, yes! <laughs> Twilight, if you're nasty. Um, yo, so um, I'm going to I'm gonna switch it up. I'm going to do my least favorite sound first so that I can end on a high note. My least favorite sound is uh, a CD skipping. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. There's something about my, like, brain that when you're like, Man, oh, it like, sucks oh. right now. I felt that. Oh, yeah. It, it, like, puts bubbles in my brain. Um, and then my favorite sound I can share with you guys right now. Listen. That should have wake up a house full of stoners at, like, <laughs> six in the morning. So I'm gonna be like, oh, oh, hey, you, you smoking? Yeah, what's going on? You smoking? You smoking? Yeah. Wake up, babe. 
Are you back? Right. No? Mm -hmm. And these days, that sound isn't even accompanied with the popping of seeds. It's great. Oh, back in the day, it'd be like. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to send it back over to you, Bam. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it made it back like it so often does. Isn't the interweb magical, friends? Um, oh, shoot. Favorite and least favorite. Our least favorite sound. And uh, I, 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 I don't even like talking about it. It is absolutely, um, uh, oh, gosh, it's nails on a, a, a stone wall or a nail file. Mm. Those sounds absolutely kill me. Um, so, uh, yes, it, I, I, I can't stand it. And then uh, my favorite sound is uh, it, you can get it with many things. Gak, Nutty Putty um the uh, a gooey enough play-doh but it's when you push it into the cart and it and it farts <laughs> and that little it's like a deep it's more i'm mean, fart sound is amazing but it's specifically that like <laughs> when you're pushing it in i could do that for fucking days like that could be my job and i would yeah. and you could pay me minimum wage to do it and just yeah. i would do it all fucking day. that's my favorite sound um you're you're Solid. all yeah Solid. you're all Touching, right. going so high, going so deep, and I'm like, you know what you can't. Yeah. But that is, it's like uh, it will uh, when kids do it. Like if I'm around a kid and they're doing it, I ruin them for their parents because I crack up for it so much. So they're like, oh, I should do this all the time, especially when people are asleep. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> so I, uh, I absolutely love it. Um, holy crap, dude! Speaking of things that I love. Uh, the the primary amongst them being Dungeons and Dragons with these freaking awesome human beings over here. So uh, please um, uh, be sure to, uh, to to join us in our little ritual that we like to do around here. Maybe you've heard about it. Maybe you haven't. We like to take a lighter. Like, uh, well, that's a, that's a joint. Like this one right here. It's still my little Pisces guy. Make sure we're not going to light any of our friends, family, or household pets on fire and go. Lighters up. Mmm, let's play some fucking D and D. We D and D hyped and fantasy literally for you and me. So load up bowl and make a roll to take control. We D and D. <laughs> Ooh. Man, that freaking intro, man, gets me so pumped every single time. My friends, we are gathered. We have uh, the torches lit, so to speak. We have gathered our heroic heroes. Yeah, I guess that was a little bit of a double heroic heroes. But if you will now please allow me to set the mood. <laughs> Now all I'll think about is that sound. I'm going to have to go buy some Nutty Putty after this. I'll go to the Nutty Putty <laughs> store. All right. When last we left the helping committee, they successfully beat back the badger-born bully tank badgerly and bestowed a blinding beatdown upon his beleaguered body. The moonbeam of Dickens' tangle face carved a hole in the cave roof, which collapsed upon the giant constrictor snake summoned by tank. And Pickles seized upon the opportunity, climbing up and shouting to gather a crowd of nearby onlookers in hopes that they'd see through Tank's false claims. It was then that a terrific assault of Dickens, Digby, and Gary made short work of Tank's backup badgers, as some were fed to the ferocious appetite of the giant serpent, while others were delivered to the pillar of searing moonlight. Pickles and Amaryllis then set upon Tank, leaving him blinded and weak on the cavern floors beneath the burrow restaurant. As Amaryllis' link to the god seed rekindled, it began to glow and floated in the air at her embrace. While the giant serpent, seeking its own survival, sought to flee to the caves above. Now littered with people, drawn by the beckoning call of Pickles Ennui. Lips. All right, guys, we jump back in love! <laughs> They're all still sitting in the dusty caverns beneath the burrow restaurant, having come through some service tunnels here, uh, following some badgers down here trying to find what was going on with this god seed. 
Well, you found, indeed, Tank Badgerly, the bu childhood bully of, uh, of Digbag Mole Ington III, and kind of just a jerk around town. Uh, standing nearby, it is seemingly to be communicating it similarly to how you all had before, with his band of 12 badgers, two mushrooms, and a snake. You guys sprung into action, Dickens. Your spell, uh, your sleep spell definitely managed to probably be the MVP of this fight, managing to put all 12 of the badger minions to sleep. Uh, as you guys just proceeded to feed it around. You know, Shout currently there's still... <laughs> currently there's still this large hole punched into the ground from where Tank had uh, fled away uh, <clears throat> or attempted to. Unfortunately, being blinded by Amaryllis, he's now just kind of bumping into this uh, into this wall. Like, hey, what's going on? You know, hearing the egg kind of starting to float down this tunnel. Amaryllis, you know, you're kind of floating there for a moment when you hear this sound, this cry of a startled crowd behind you. You know, uh, D uh, Dickens, Gary, and Digby standing upon the ledge. Uh, you know, you see Arco still kind of down in the low area. He ah, looks up and you see that hole that the, that, you know, from the cave in that had landed on the constrictor as he just kind of works his way up this root system to the side and out. You hear the, ah, terrified scream of the citizens that had gathered around uh, to, to witness uh, whatever Pickles was, was calling them to see. But currently you're all very aware of the risk that this giant beast, this wild creature now damaged uh, very severely uh, could inflict upon this crowd above. Now, Dungeon Master to Player, you guys have completed this encounter. This, this snake now lies at a mere five hit points and all of your turns and in initiative are next. So... Yeah. With that in mind, you know, feel free to uh, to have the what do you do here almost symbolize as well as the when you defeat a foe. What does the, the helping committee, a, a group of you all do? You know, Gary, you were next in initiative, so, you know, you are quick. You look up and you see, you know, the ever-burning torch in your hand. But what does the helping committee do as this large constrictor snake now seeks to unleash its aggressions on the innocent folk of the quiet, quiet and quaint humble patch? What do you do? Uh, may I start? Yeah. So first up, I'm gonna give Arco a hand and get him, you know, from the ledge to the actual same level we're at. No problem. He's a small creature, very light. You just, you know, you've, you got a lot of strength in you, Gary. You grab him and like a sack of hay, just pull him up as a little almost, goblin. Almost too much. It's like, I got you, buddy. <laughs> 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 ah, thanks. Oh, he's like dusting himself off. But I do want to cry out, at least to, you know, the villagers of Hummelpatch, like, Tank Badgerly unleashed a snake. You hear from up top, like, a snake. They're like, oh, a snake in unison. <laughs> no, yes, you hear the cries, like, oh, take Badgerly. Oh, look out. Oh, back, back. Oh, the beast, it comes. You know, you see the last of its tail. Remember, it's like 15 feet long. At this point, you know, only about 10 feet of it is above. There's still a little bit below in the room that you're at now. Uh, but yes, you know, you call Hello. out, you hear some people respond, take Badgerly. What could he have to do with this? Uh, the, the Badgerly boy, he... You know, you just kind of hear the, the, the commotion of the crowd above. With so we, we literally just told you, he released a snake. That's what <laughs> he did. Like, oh, sorry, we're in fear for our lives right now as this giant <laughs> beast is coming to kill us and you're calling that's, me some that's 40 what people. That, that's how he was involved. He, he's the one that did this. It, just hand him a sheet of paper. Here, it's, it's all on there. Just. Can I, like, go, now that Arco is, like, with me, can I be sort of like, yeah, keep, keep going, like, Tank Badgerly, Tank Badgerly. He's like, Tank Badgerly, ah, ah, you know, he starts shouting along. Tank Badgerly, yes, that was, was Tank. Man. That's, it's, it. Yeah, keep going. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a limit to, like, dialogue type action. Yeah, it's like six seconds, roughly. So I'd say at this point for, like, your round action or whatever, you've done it. Would I be able to burn my bonus action to continue with Speak With Animals? Because that lasts 10 minutes. Um, yeah, if I, you, you would still have it, uh, if that's the case. Uh, it has not been 10 minutes. I mean, you sound just like her. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, here's the fun part about D&D. That was about 36 seconds. Fucking right. Cool. <laughs> wow. God, that Intense. sounds accurate. That, that's, <laughs> that, that sounds right. true. Yeah, Yo, mm -hmm. no, you said true. that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to let the snake know. I'm like, 
whoa, 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 hang back. Like, I, I want to try and present myself as the snake's friend. I'm like, okay, hang back. These people the are snake, snake hunters. <laughs> you headed towards some snake hunters. <laughs> um, okay, so we have kind of a stat. Unfortunately, this snake is not an intelligent creature. So the tenets of language, the, like your actual message is not necessarily getting through, but you were able to communicate with the, with it basic ideas. You know, before you were like, this guy's not your friend. And it was like, none of you are my friend. You know, it's just like, it realized, wait, threats could be everywhere. Um, so, you know, you call out to it, you see it does kind of stop its motion a little bit, but it's already kind of fallen victim to it in a way that it was granted a spell effect that doesn't exist within the spell. Um, so, you know, you do see, you kind of command the snake and you see it stops a little bit for a moment, you know, almost like a snake charmer. Like it's like its body goes straight for a moment as it listens to the snake language that comes out of your mouth. Sweet. Tell it. Snake language. Tell it that it's about to die. Language. You said snake <laughs> charmer and I pictured somebody being like, so snake? Hey. Yo. <laughs> Well, other than that, because I feel like that's my action and bonus, um, I'm going to piggyback Arco and head towards the egg. All right, sweet. So, you know, you uh, uh, again, if you want to go down there, that's a 30 foot drop. Um, it goes down 30 feet to that next floor below. Um, there are roots and everything yep. there. So if you just want to give me an athletics check, um, you could you could get get to there and then uh uh, it's a pretty simple DC, because you know, like I said, there's a lot of roots and everything into the into these walls. So uh, it should be just a DC 10, to just make sure you don't fall. You know, when it comes to Gary Greenheart, some sometimes a simple DC 10. <laughs> don't, don't get ahead of yourself now, yeah. He's <laughs> not wrong. If Man, that heavy armor has not really helped you out that much so far, buddy. Not so great. <laughs> as far as stealth goes, remember. You are not Rial Othraven. I know. That, that's been the biggest shift. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is not a sneaky boy. Oh, no, trust me. Sneaky boy. Going from a fighter to a fucking, yeah, to an artificer, <laughs> trust me, not an easy shift. But hey, we're pushing forward. We're, we're doing something crazy. Uh, and we're supporting each other and fucking coming up with awesome, epic adventures and fun. So let's fucking get it. Damn straight. Let's see how this athletics checks. So... Sometimes <laughs> shit just works out, buddy. Boom. Um, yeah, you, know, you, know? you like grab Arco, you throw him over your shoulder, um, and you uh, and you're able to, while holding him, grab a root and just kind of <laughs> run down the wall side a little bit as you hold on, <laughs> kind of counterbalancing yourself with this root. Um, <laughs> but Gary, you drop down. Tink Bashley is still blind. I'm um, sorry. I've got so many squares and people and things here that this might be a little... I'm just going to move him for now. Um, Gary, you kind of land in this area next to Tank. You, know, you can't land on top of him. Um, but he's in the corner. You're currently blind. Like, ah, man, what? Ah, God, freaking, you got fucked. And he's just like punching, trying to claw this wall. Um, as you see, uh, Pickles and Amaryllis is now floating on this egg in the room. You know, she's got her arms wrapped around it, the warm glow of the now rekindled god seed, you know, starting to glow ever brighter. And you're feeling that wave of, of uh, warmth that radiates off of it. Uh, you know, you kind of get down into this hole. Now you you, you look around, you know, Gary, you, you, being a farmer and, and familiar with this this location, you do see a lot of like little rare cooking mushrooms. You know, this, this cavern beneath the one you right. guys were in leads down to where Digby's dad grew grows his mushrooms for the restaurant. And so, uh, you know, some of his uh, oh. the truffles and the like. Um, so, uh, you know, you're kind of like, you look around, you see a couple clusters of these mushrooms, you know, up against the wall. Takes nowhere near any of them right now. But, you know, you can't help but see this, like, glowing beacon of lights next to you, you know, floating almost at your eye level. And Amaryllis, you know, her arms wrapped around it as she's hugging it, and it's just kind of like spinning with her in tow. <laughs> Oh, cripes. That's a whole lot. I, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm out of actions at this point, but, um. Yeah, so like I said, yeah, as far as like the encounter itself is concerned, it's, it's, this is more, this is a little bit more narrative driven in the sense that yeah. the snake seems to be paused. 
Um, it's, you know, this, the calling out to it in the animal language has stopped and it's, you know, it's, you see its body go stiff a little bit as, as if that kind of confusion has set in upon it again. Uh, but currently that's what you have. You have Amaryllis floating here with the god seed, the snake getting ever closer to this large group of people gathered nearby. Um, you know, you hear the, as you call out to them, like, Tank badly. Well, is Tank involved in this mess? And, you know, everybody's seemingly confused. Remember, he's a bit of a celebrity in town because after he stole Digby's invention and submitted it as his gift, uh, he was he was bestowed the the celebrity like status of one of the finest gift givers of last year's opening ceremony. So, uh, you know, yeah, the, um, the, your plan till now seems to have worked. But what about the rest of you guys? What are you up to? Can I hear the crowd from down in the hall? Yeah, uh, I would say Amaryllis. You you know, as you and this this thing bond again, it's like the 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 you spoke this this entity into life this was at one time a simple root well, not a simple i mean a ruby dragon's egg is a big deal but through all of the wild magic that you had connected to in your time in the, in the like temple so. yes yeah, it's, it's very work appropriate yes <laughs> yeah. um you know but this this connection between you two only seems to be growing stronger you know as it tried to protect you by giving pickles a platform by which to reach you and defend you um you know which is outside of what it's done so far but also there's that warmth that kindred connection between you saw tank speaking to this egg it seemed and it, mm. its light wasn't glowing and you know it, it didn't seem to be having the connection you've even seen your allies you know uh near and around it and it does seem to now be like connected to you through something now what the, the truth or the what this thing even really is or represents that's still pretty unknown to you what? but you cannot help but notice the bond between you two growing okay well that being said um, so you said that we were like, and you spinning. do hear them. I'm sorry. I do. I okay, yes. Cool. So you. in that sense, it's almost like when you hear underwater and sound here yeah. feels distorted, you're kind of hearing that building storm that you were present in the egg at, at the same time as hearing the commotion and your friends and tank. It's all in this one feed of sound that, you know, you're, you feel a little more present, although you're not used to directing this kind of sensation. So, right. Totally. <laughs> um, well, I hear, yeah. I hear everything going on and you know i just just f tank bad badgerly you know so i want to uh press the digitate tank snake up in the air above everybody uh -huh. awesome. <laughs> just like casually real quick <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you know, you just kind of shoot fireworks up into the sky and they form in the light. Again, it's like tank snakes, pretty simple yeah. message, but she just kind of sits in a cube space just above as this giant snake is coming up and you hear again this kind of building infusion. Tank snake, is this is this part of his show? Is this part of the gift? Are we in danger? What's going on? You know, you hear the confused commotion of the people above. Okay, cool. I'm like, all right, sick, awesome. Um, and then I'm rotating with the god seed, right? Uh, so I want to encourage it to rotate faster and faster. I want to see if I can't generate some sort of force. Um, and I, I'm willing to like risk it for the biscuit, risk it all. So mm -hmm. I like it. Um, yeah. So currently this will be your force of will. So it'll be a direct uh, as far. Yeah, it'll be a direct uh, uh, charisma check. So click the stat bonus next to the charisma stat itself. Scoop it up. Bow, bow. So, wait, the top one, right? Yeah, the the actual stat, not the saving throw. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, right, the stat charisma. I like here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Charisma. I think I did it right. Yep. Boom, yeah, you did. All right, sweet. So 15 is pretty good. Uh, you know, you, you you kind of start channeling that. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I am. Hi. Yep. Hey, Thank you. I've hey. Got, I'm sure you guys are, are hearing that. There's a, there's a weird sound. Hi, hi, I'm crazy. Dad. Are you having fun? Hi. Hi. Are you Daddy? Are you, daddy? Are you daddy? Daddy? Are you Daddy? Are you Daddy? Excuse me. Father. Oh, father. All right. So. Oh, father. <laughs> father. Okay. So you guys, uh, yeah, you, you, you use this, this power of your will. You know, you channel into this connection that you have between you and this creature. And uh, as you, you know, start feeling, you feel indeed, you know, you're slowly rotating one direction and then it stops. 
Gary, Pickles, you know, you're both standing there and suddenly you, you watch as this orb you, 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 you begin to start spinning faster and faster to the point where you kind of start getting tail slapped a little bit by Amaryllis' tail every time she spins by. It's just like... <laughs> and, uh, but this, but this, uh, this, this, this god seed is now <laughs> growing ever brighter and spinning ever faster. You see some <laughs> fireworks kick out and you see tank snakes through the hole in the sky as it's, you know, with like a little, little tiny arrow pointing at the snake that's now erupting from the ground. You hear the jarbled confusion of this, but Digby Dickens, you guys see this going on. What do you guys do? Um, all of a sudden, I'm wearing a chef hat, <laughs> and I look over at uh, Digby, and I'm like, Chef. Yes. How hot are you supposed to flambe snake, Chef? Oh dear Lord, are we doing this? And then. Oh. Then I'm just gonna like uh, the fucking moonbeam back onto the snake as hard as I fucking can and try to turn it into a delicious snake steak. A steak. Oh, it's a steak. A steak. I like it. Snake to steak. And then Digby, what are you, uh, what, how are you contributing to this little moment? Um, so I just want to get clarification on what exactly is happening as Drew. Totally. Um, so Gus, you're, you're shooting moonbeams down into the, the pit where the egg is or onto the snake. Not yet. I'm not. <laughs> uh, okay. Look, so I mean, like, to... my goal is to hit the snake. I'm, I'm trying to cook that motherfucker. Turn Brother, it in. I'm with, with you. You, like, it, it can be another gift for the festival. You're, you're about to feed half the town. I like. We it. saved half the town. <laughs> I mean, the, maybe they might think that it's from Tank at this point, <laughs> but whatever. We'll tell them you made it. They'll believe us. Right. Yeah. No, I, I like it. <laughs> Fuck Tank. That guy sucks. He really does. He really, God, he's stank, stank badgerly. Stank badgerly. <laughs> yeah, you hear him like, oh, you suckers. No, I, no I'll, I'll despite your best interest, there's nothing you can do. Uh, well, he's still down in the hole with that egg and all of his, all of his friends. Thank you every time. Down in the hole. <laughs> in an egg. <laughs> all right. So sweet, you know, you see this kind of moment building, you know, Pickles, you're down, you're underneath at this point. You've been kind of just watching this go down as Amaryllis begins spinning faster here, stoking flames, building up on the on the level above you. What what do you do in this moment, Pickles on Wii? Uh, I finish my cigarettes and I flick it at, <laughs> at uh, the back of uh, you. Stank Snatcher's face. <laughs> nice. All right, uh, go ahead and give me your dart attack because he's actually really yeah. low. Well, and it's non-lethal. Much non-lethal. Actually. Yes, yes. You guys yeah. did declare that last time. I, I would. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Just annihilated. So crit, man. Rules yeah. are rules. So is this, is this enough? Like, can I can I put some flavor on it? Or... You get all the juice you okay. want on this one. So excellent. So pickles. Ah, juice. Ah, juice. I love a good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> good gravy. <laughs> I love a spicy meatball. I love a good gravy and a roux, if you will. Um. Okay. So pickles on we um finishes his cigarette. And he darts it at uh, at Stank's face, Stank. or at the back of his head. And so he like, <laughs> I just want him to like immediately like, with him being knocked unconscious or falling down, I want him to like have his pants fall down and like <laughs> like his underwear shows or his butt shows, and then he like falls and then he like makes a fart sound and like <laughs> yeah, just like, like the. A confluence of embarrassing things. Yeah. So you flick the cigarette, and the cigarette hits him right in the back of his head. He's like, ah, what the heck? Ah, hey, 
and he bangs his nose on, and then he sneezes, which makes a fart pop out. And he's like, oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And you see him checking his little pants. He's like, oh, no. And he starts trying to pull him and just kind of shift him around. He's like, oh, shit, shit. And he gets caught up because his shoes are, or his little feet are kind of tucked, tied together. And he falls over on the ground, and these little boxers stick out. And, uh, and you know, it's a bunch of little, uh, it's like a little pretty goblin lady, like a bunch of her face. Like, mm, this little pretty goblin lady all over his underwear. Uh, and yes, you see, he farts, sneezes a couple more times. He's like, shut yeah. the dust. He's like, oh, no, eh, yeah. oh, no, you guys are the worst. Yeah. And he passes out unconscious. I almost feel bad, but it's tank. Yeah, so then I, then I, um, if I may, with my movement, I'd like to just, like, backflip out of the, the hole. Like, I just, like, then hey, go. yo, here's a cool little, uh, so, like, Pickles, you're, like, you feel the blow, the whirring wind of this egg starting to spin faster and faster around you. And Amaryllis' tail keeps like just going by your head. So you've got it there. So where would you yeah. like to end up, Pickles? Cause like, would... it's, it's starting to spin real fast and you can kind of use it to chuck yourself. Cool. And I'd also like to like, kind of use my own momentum to like kick it towards the snake also. Dope, dope. Yeah. The egg itself. Yeah, like oh, you, like okay. Emerald and Snake, I kind of just give it a little like pop, just to like spin, you know, like bowling on In the that like direction. That arc. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so you see this, the simmering. Uh, so all right, we'll start at the front of this and work our way down. So Dickens, Digby. Here it is. You know, you see the snake lodged in the ceiling. There's still some some motion as its giant body thrashes around. The crowd that's gathered is, is shouting, confused amongst one another. What? What is this? Take Bramsley. This is a giant snake. I fear for my life. You know, and all the workers that have gathered to bring all these goods. You know, you hear carriages like stopping. Like this commotion's getting bigger and bigger. Um, you know, but right now you hear the, the muffled voices of about 10, 15 people, which for a small village like Humblebatch is quite a gathering. Um, you even hear just over the group of them all, just for a little flavor, the, the old Sam. What's this going on here, huh? Take Badgerly, you say. You know, and you can just say, I hear his voice uniquely amongst the crowd. Um, but yes, Dickens, Digby, you're standing here on the ledge. You feel the rock skittering under your feet. You know, you look at where the, the great badger massacre occurred on the far side of the room where, you know, as the snake climbs, it's just like pooping out just bones and fur Jeez. from these badgers. And, uh, and so okay. there you stand. Go ahead, guys, set this... Uh, this this team moment off. What do you guys do? Oh, it's it's you and me. Okay. Oh fucking let's do this. Uh, all right. So, I'm just gonna discuss while the show is on pause. Uh, so what would you like to do there, bud? Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've got this jug of whatever. I'd like to cover this egg in oil and light it up, 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 light it up, 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 and throw it at the fucking snake. Oh. And then we just go ham bony on this fucking snake. Okay. I just don't know how I'm with these, you see I have these dumps. I, I can't, I don't know how I'm gonna get all of that happening all the way over by where the snake is. Do you see what I'm? You see what I'm saying, Gus? Okay, Here, here's what we can do. Um, already, I'm already you, on board. You know when Ripley gets in that big yellow thing to fight the alien? Yep. I want to be your big yellow thing. <laughs> That's so funny. That's, you know what? I'm not going to talk about that right Hashtag now. Hashtag that. <laughs> I want to be your big yellow thing. I want it straight to romantic. So- you, you can just hop on my back, and if you want to use our, like, combined strength to, to like, get the oil Spray over there. oil on and light up. Do you have something that lights up? I mean, I can suck back all the oil and then get pretty far, I'd admit. And, I, and I'd be willing to burn an inspiration point to, to like, get it there. See, okay. the problem is, like, I can't use Flamethrower right now because I have it set to Force Cannon, which won't light anything on fire. Oh. So, is it we'll possible? Light that, we'll light that motherfucker up with this moonbeam. 
that I don't understand. So yeah, that would be radiant damage. Uh, so yeah, if cover again, this is kind of functioning more as like a team moment. You've got Pickles down there, who obviously has a lighter because she lights her cigarettes all the time. Oh shit! If you want to just like go <laughs> throw a bunch of oil on this egg and help launch it and, and set it on fire and do all this stuff, you totally can. You have access to everybody's stuff right now. So um, I, I you love know. having access to everyone's stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. You can just throw another cigarette at it. Like oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just light, let, it, let's light it, it. Yeah, right. Let's it I just and get it lit. I just want to be like, guys, Tank is the worst, but he doesn't deserve to die. He still has a family. It, he actually does kind of a good job around here when he's not being a dickhead to everyone. <laughs> but don't kill him. Just leave him in the hole. He put himself hey. down there. He can get himself out. Just get the egg out. Light it up. 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 And toss it over there, air, air, to the, so that the snake catches fire. Sweet, you know. I'm down with it. Fire snake. Right. Um, fire snake. See, pickles. We hate all the same people, and we think the same things at the same time. It's... All right, so you serve Thank it up. You. You've got the uh, you've got the jug. Um, to apply your oil, you know, you utilize your uh, again, it's class ability. One of your resources, you utilize this uh, this feature to, uh, to to add oil to the spinning, ever glowing egg. Uh, pickles, you know, you notice as the oil kind of starts splashing around, and you're just getting ready to like grab the tail and kind of help fling this thing. You see both, you know, the eager faces of Digby and Dickens kind of pop over. You know, the chef hat that's now on Dickens' <laughs> head strangely, and they're they're both looking at you as they're pouring this oil on it. And like, you know, you like, see the connection. You're doing something insane. <laughs> you know, Amaryllis. You're Great. spinning. You feel this oil fall on you, but again, you're in this weird place where it's like not just your body, but you feel, you know, the presence of this of this building energy. Um, so uh, <laughs> you start spinning around and you feel the oil slap on you. You look down pickles. You're like, you smell the oil in the air. You look at your, you know, little lighter that you have, and uh, and you see the moment before you. Uh, you want to light this match? Are we seriously going to light our friend on fire right now? Thank you for being the only one to question that. <laughs> Were we seriously going to light on She's this? resistant to fire damage. Wait. What? Amaryllis is inside the egg. She's hugging the egg. And holding the egg. And spinning I around. Not the entire time. Yeah. Am I, I can't sure see through every... I did you can't see through your head. <laughs> Look how thick these things are. Yeah, no, Amaryllis, just to just to paint the picture, because I know some of this was done last week and it's been a week. Um, it, it, Amaryllis hugged the egg, and then the egg started floating, and her with it, and she is on the outside of the egg, hugging it as it spins. <laughs> Yo, Amaryllis, you down with this? <laughs> 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 I, I, my, if I can my in any way just indicate a nod. Yeah, Amaryllis is like, yeah. Abby's like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Amaryllis, yeah, you can, you know, you're just, just like, yeah. Rah, 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 rah. You know, you hear as it spins well, I, faster. I'm but... spinning with like the intention of making this egg explode if I can. So I understand the risks that are up. I'm risking it for the biscuit. That's what I mean. I really need <laughs> but it needs the heat, right? Yeah. That's, that's what the... the the thing in the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Do it. Do the thing. This is what I need to do. The fountain in the hole. And pickles. Yeah, just flick the cigarette, the lit cigarette at the thing. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. The moment hangs yeah. in the air as this. <laughs> you see the egg kind of glows into slow motion as everybody's standing there. You know, dig me. Your eyes are wide, Amaryllis. You feel this coating of oil on the outside of the egg. You. <laughs> flick the cigarette and the ash starts to fall, you know, towards the ground as the burning ember of the cigarette gets ever closer. Uh, In a yeah. moment, Amaryllis's tail <laughs> slaps the cigarette and it kicks up enough spark and you all <gasps> watch as the little ember <gasps> lands at the end of her tail and like lighting the end of a <laughs> bottle rocket. <laughs> This burning flame starts searing up the bottom of you. Hey, Amaryllis, you are a tiefling. You are resistant to fire damage. I knew it. Um, and I would say for the for the narrative function alone of this, there, nobody's casting a damaging <laughs> spell. Um, uh, in this moment, the flame does not burn through you, but rather around you. And you, know, you see the egg starts spinning like a fiery rocket, and it just shoots. 
boom, punching a <laughs> hole through the through the wall itself. You know, it draws a straight line across the main center of the chamber. And so it blows through the wall. You know, Dickens, your feet are almost knocked mm-hmm. out from underneath you as, as the ground shakes beneath your big clown boots. And uh, and the, the egg, and with Amaryllis in tow, spitting like this, uh, this burning fire rocket, you yeah. punch through the wall and you blow a hole through the chest of the snake. Oh, and you just pop out the other side. The wounds itself are instantly cauterized by this burning fire. So no blood is sprayed on these terrified citizens below, but rather this perfectly simmered, searing hole is just punched through the giant constrictor snake. Its corpse falls to the ground. You know, all you, you stand in hush silence beneath the beneath the cave itself. But Amaryllis, <laughs> suddenly we shift to you, and you're like <gasps> flying through the sky. You start like shooting ever higher. You don't really like. It's like you knew how enough to aim the pinball slammer, but you didn't know where the ball was gonna go. And so you're just like rocketing through the sky and you notice that as you have memories there's these little adjustments and changes in the trajectory of this egg in the sky you know for a moment you get a flash and you see the big giant black iron gates built by the Indicus Empire to protect the kingdom of Satiba you know where this festival that you are all to attend you see the gathered crowds of the thousands of people that call Satiba home all begin to gather at this at this big pillar in front of the gate but from this high perspective you look below and you see something that your eyes have never seen before. A gathered army suited up in this strange dark iron armor matching the color of the gate itself has seemed to be established on the other side of the gate. You count probably, you know, just like a quick look around, you would guess there's 20,000 troops have gathered on the other side of the gate. <gasps> And you feel this ping to the life force, the creature within the egg. And you remember how she spoke to you and said, this world will consume itself if she is not brought back into the world to right these wrongs. And you, for a brief moment, Amaryllis, see this massive army on one side of the gate and then all the innocent folk of the Spring Kingdom on the other. You know, it flashes one more time and suddenly you're looking at the ground like you're skyrocketing toward the ground. Just like... Uh, Amaryllis, give me a charisma check on how well you can land this rocket you're riding on. Like, are you Johnny Knoxville the first time where you almost got killed by the thing that shot out of it? Or are you Johnny Knoxville the third time when he stick actually goes and he shoots, he flips upside down and it almost lands on him and kills him? Which one of those? Let's see. I'm Abby and... <clears throat> This is Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dope. 20, oh, yeah. Big money, big money. Oh, uh, big money, yeah. no whammies. <laughs> All right, Amaryllis, <laughs> you, uh, you, you see this and you're instantly filled with this flush of fear. It does not seem, I mean, like opening ceremonies have never been, you know, people, there's ambassadors and emissaries and the like, but never a gathered army standing on the other side of the gate. And just as you're ready to fear or think ill intent of what this army's purpose might be farther to the south you see this mat like like the landmass itself ends and all there is is a sea of black clouds oh the blight which is destroying the world of Ganjaria, unknown to the minds of the Spring Kingdom, this black creeping shadow filled with this like streaks of purple and black lightning just kind of is rolling over the southern hill. And it looks like it's floating directly towards Sati. And that's where we're going to pick it up after intermission, guys. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, But yes, we we, we have finally gotten to to see uh, a little bit of a glimpse beyond the Black Iron Gates. Mm -hmm. And... uh, a little bit of the world that beckons beyond. So thank you guys so much. Holy crap, dudes. We uh, we are up against a little bit of a, a tight deadline tonight, so I'm trying to get us in and out. Uh, we do have a 10-minute intermission that we do around here. Uh, make sure you check out all this incredible art. We, we have been so blessed. We have over 100 pieces of original art that have been created for and around this project by nearly a dozen different artists at this point. Huge shout-outs to guys like Vlad Kolonik, who is the titan that has done yes. so much 
uh, Sean Gilchrist, who's done the character art for this this yeah. uh, this campaign, and uh, and Ed Palmino for making all the layouts. Um, but yes, we have a ten minute intermission. I'm going to try to figure out how to get rid of that sound. I'm so sorry that I keep hearing it come in. I don't know if you're hearing it, but it's driving me crazy. Um, I'm going to try to get that fixed. Oh. We've got ten minutes, and then uh, we will see what uh, what happened with all rocket. Rocket Von Shucks. Yeah. Yay, <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, another nickname.
Welcome back, buds, to We D and D, the pot positive live tabletop role playing experience. I do want to apologize, my friends. We have found that there's this small chirping sound that is slowly driving me insane. Um, that we have tried so many troubleshooting things on, and uh, we were unable to change it over remission. Bear with us. I, I assure you that by the time we come back after our dark week, this will not be a problem anymore. Uh, mm. Or I'll have gone mad and I'll live at the top of a tower. Um, nice. So, yes. So uh, thank you guys so much for hanging with us. Again, we're kind of truncated on our time tonight, but we just want to get right back into that juicy, juicy d d So let's, uh, we had us a kind of a big, uh, giant, epic moment there. Let me bring you guys over. Here we go. All right, guys, what do you say we jump? Oh back in <laughs> Amaryllis you're still flying through the sky you know this this moment that lingered in the air as you saw this encroaching darkness that went as far south as you could see even high in the sky uh, you know ending itself at the root near the, the, the south side frozen ocean but this ever growing cloud of this chaos storm that seems to be growing from the southern tip spreading all the way beyond you know for a, for a brief moment you know, all you can see is this terrible thing. And as the egg starts plummeting back toward the ground, you can't help but look at the center of the continent of Gonjaria. And amidst a forest called the Sea of Trees, there is this expansive, almost never-ending forest to the north of where you guys are at, like to the northwest. You see this one giant tree, mana tree itself, growing, reaching up almost to the heavens. It's so large that even amidst this giant forest, it's as if the roots itself were this massive forest the size of which you've never seen. <laughs> now, uh, there are many rumors and myths, but uh, again, you guys in Santivan have been uh, somewhat secluded from some of these facts. Uh, and in this brief moment as you're soaring wow. through the sky, you see this beautiful tree, this ever-expanding forest that seems to breathe. You know, it's got, it's just this ocean of trees. And then to the south, this storm of rolling black chaotic energy seemingly threatening this forest and your kingdom. So you much, it's like overwhelming. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you know, finally the spinning stops. The trajectory, the combined, you know, harnessing of the magics of this egg, your own, and the combined efforts of your team. You start plummeting back toward the ground. Now, this is where your charisma save comes in. You know, you, you, you try to focus your will, and uh, with 24, definitely good enough to pull off some fancy land. And um, this is Thick. kind of what we see here, uh, down here where where, uh, where the burrow is at. There's like a, cra a crowd gathered around. Uh, you see Tarvin Tinderberry and Old Sam have kind of like joined this crowd. Mm -hmm. There's a couple workers and, and uh, you know, field hands nearby. You see a couple carriages have stopped themselves on the road. You know, that right now at this time of day, carriages just flooding the road. And even this isn't really a great representative of just how many there are. Uh, but there are carriages lining the streets and pulled up. You see a lot of them uh, offloading near the, uh, the the Greenheart Farms to the north. Um, <laughs> luckily enough, it is LJ is the southernmost member of, of the Greenheart family right now. And you see he's oh. not really trying to bring attention over that direction. If anything, you see him grab a couple guys, look over his shoulder and like start ushering them back north toward, you know, toward the farm proper. So, uh, Amaryllis, where do you and the God Seed try to land? Oh, gee. So, <laughs> do I have a sense of how far, like, I have? Like, could I land in the forest? Yeah, you could. So, the, the seed trees would be beyond the gate. Um, so, if you, if you want to, like, shoot off beyond the Black Iron Gates uh, toward the, you know, the, the center of the monetary and all that, you could. Uh, you're not exactly sure, like, of, of how that might go, but, uh... Yeah, yeah, so what, what I'm thinking is, I mean, I'm terrified. It looks like war is approaching, and then something even worse than war is beyond that. And all I know is that I feel as if it's my my destiny to bring Sardior into this world to even the balance. So I want to aim for the mana tree with the god seed. Yeah. All right. You, uh... You kind of aim yourself here and you feel the egg, you know, in this brief moment, you kind of like turn your body, you guys are kind of hovering in the sky and you feel the, the connection. The monotree uh, is by far the most powerful thing in this world. It was the birthing of this tree at the end of the Legend of the Ferocious Five uh, that led to the confluence of magics that created this alternate yeah. world uh, in, 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 you know, in mirroring of the uh, the realm of Everendale. Uh, so... 
you know, in this moment, you know, you see what could only be described as the most magical thing you've ever seen, a tree that seems to span over the horizon, you know, ley lines of magic that course through its very roots. The, the, the tree itself breathes with magical energy. And Ooh. thinking of the most powerful and pure form of magical energy that you can, you direct the egg toward it, toward it. Yeah. And you feel for a moment between you and the egg, a sorrow. <laughs> it, it's sad that you wish to separate from it, but it does seem to be picking up what you're putting down and crave <laughs> strong magical energy. So yeah. Amaryllis, in this moment, do you send the god seed toward the mana tree or do you return with it to, uh, you know, some soil around uh, Humble Patch? Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it away. Yeah, All right. Just wistfully, so. You. Hashtag send it. We know nothing <laughs> about that. You know, you so guys are all like looking up through from the ground, through the hole in the snake. You see, you know, Amarilla shooting around in the sky. And then suddenly, Poosh, this big buildup of energy, as if all that blinding light became its own propulsion, as an explo- a detonation between their two bodies. Poosh, in a large flash, you see the god see <laughs> just launch like a rocket. And Amaryllis, as you start to fall, with no longer uh, levitated by this magical <laughs> element, you're about 60 feet in the air. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. You feel as you begin free falling. And the last thing that you see is the jetting red arc of the god seed headed in the direction of the monotree. <sighs> as the black iron gates and the mountain ranges they are built into now cut off your perspective view. We switch to you guys. What? You all see Amaryllis <laughs> suddenly falling, no longer uh, held by the uh, by the emerald egg, the oh. god seed itself. You see Amaryllis is plummeting toward the ground. What do you all do? May I note that I have wings that are entirely useless? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they trying. Oh man, I, you see them. They're just going. They're, the they're trying. Right now. God they're bless. very small. They're very small. <laughs> Being uh, small doesn't mean they're useless. They, they will find a purpose. That's right. All right. I, I start being like that guy in that that guy in Dumbo. He's like underneath him, he's getting ready to catch him when he's diving. <laughs> All right, yeah. So you kind of dig it. You got to get up to like ground level. You know, it's like you you see this. You know, this roots. Obviously, the snake got up there so easily. You kind of look around and whoosh, whoosh, you know, your big long elastic arms just kind of like bleh, pull you up. You know, you pop up over here. Let me move Amaryllis, uh, the God Seed. Oh, let me take the God Seed actually and go. And it's sh- shooting Where off, it go? So cool. shooting off toward oh, the uh, so man. Um, but we'll say you know, Amaryllis is pro- probably about here. You know, she's, she's we got coming down sixty go. feet. Okay. You uh, you pop up. You know, you see you, you almost climb through the hole in the snake and pop Ooh. up on the other side. Uh, I'm up through the hole of the snake. Yeah, through the giant hole that was punched in the snake. <laughs> oh, through like actually through the snake. Yeah, well, literal, literal right. thing. Like, I just wanted to make sure that's what we were doing. Well, just Dickens in this case. So you uh, you pop up through the through the hole and you see that she's falling down. Now, Dickens, you've got a lot of stuff in your pants, but a big giant parachute to catch Amaryllis <laughs> might be pushing it. Um, what do you what do you want to do to try to like catch her? Uh, okay, I'd like to burn my elasticity to try to make my hand as big as possible. <laughs> That is a great yeah. use of a racial power. So uh, Dickens, you know, you start kind of pulling on your hand. You're like, yeah, this might work. But, you know, as is the way of the hand, you're going to need some extra strain on either side. You start blowing it at them to get it bigger, but you're going to need the aid of your allies. Pickles, Gary, Digby, what do you guys do? You see Dickens run up and start expanding his hand to try to catch her. I'm going to hippie hop up there and grab one of the thingies and help him hold, like, hold it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you start stretching it out. You know, again, this cartoonish elasticity that Dickens Tangleface seems to have, uh, especially when he uses his racial power to enhance it. Uh, it, it starts stretching. And you kind of, you know, like when you stretch one of those slap hands, you start getting kind of like a, a tense surface for which Amaryllis could land. Sweet. Um, oh. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I'm like, I should make a joke about needing a hand. <laughs> No, he didn't. Yeah. 
<laughs> this should be really nice. It would be very good if you did that. Yay. <laughs> Trampoline on me. Oh! Hey. Keeps. <laughs> All right, we'll work on the next one. That's okay. This is a life. first time. Took us a while to come up with the name, so, you know, <laughs> in, in due time, it's all fine. Mm-hmm. You're all standing like, around Amaryllis, you're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, our friend's plummeting to her death. Oh, then yes, uh, is it possible that I could use my action and my bonus action? We're not really an initiative right now. We're kind of like in narrative function now. So what, what do you, you want to do? You could probably do it. I just, I would like to have my uh, Eldritch Cannon uh, come and, like, become part of my shield. Uh-huh. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, I guess it would be on this side. And kind of look like a Mega Man cannon that will just shoot roly-poly <laughs> up to Amaryllis so that it will hold on to her and slow her fall because it can fly still. Dope. I like it a lot. Yeah, kind of, you know, like you're shooting this little, uh, your little flying frig, you're like, Polly, you know, he like whoop, looks at you, <laughs> makes his little servo sound, and he rolls over to you. You know, you see the cannon jumps off Arco's back onto your shield. Rolly Polly slides into the cannon head. Poof, you fire this, you know, all you guys, Dickens, uh, uh, pick, uh, Dickens and Pickles, you guys are stretching, you know, your hand and you see this giant ball shoot out from the earth beneath you. <laughs> Roly poly flies in the air. Amaryllis, maybe a dexterity saving, uh, dexterity saving throw. Ah! Oh, hot, With baby. advantage because of Roly poly yeah. Nice, Ooh, 10. Yeah. All right, so you see Ooh. as it flies by Amaryllis, you're like, oh, poly. And the first time you reach for it, you don't connect. You see Polly opens his wings and he's like shooting down toward you as you're plummeting toward the ground as they're building this stretchy thing beneath you. Uh, Gary, what do you do? So, uh, am I, I, I'm still in the hole, right? I'm still in the yeah. hole with me. Yes. Yeah. Tank's unconscious. He is knocked out. So he's like <sighs> sleeping on the ground. He's like, suck it. And blind. Man, a little bit of blood. Sharded. He, sh- he sharded. And He's farted. got some shards. He, he does have. He, he failed a shard check. More like tank shard. Shard tank. Shard tank. Well, do the shard tank. Suckers. 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 I give that two thumbs down. May I? Uh, can I please take his boots of butt kicking? <laughs> Yes! And we stole your shoes, bitch! <laughs> and we stole your shoes! <laughs> Drop a house <laughs> All right, Gary, you uh, you look down. You're like, man, those are some sweet kicks. You can't help but speak in Tank's voice when you look upon the boots of butt kicking. Um, they glow, you know, again, they, they're made out of like this green stretched leather. It actually has a little bit of a look of dragon skin. Uh, and it has some pointed spikes on the tips. You know, you pop his shoes off. He's just, he's out. He's unconscious. He can't stop you. Uh, so Gary, you ob- obtain the boots of the boots of butt kicking. Uh, they are magical. Um, uh, you would need a little time to deduce the nature of the magic, but you have seen one of the effects that does have a daily power or it can push something 10 feet as you felt kicked into the back of your butt, buddy. Hmm. All right. Can I use the boots of butt kicking? Because you said they had spikes on the bottom, yeah, right? Yeah, Because that's totally. what kicked me in the back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah can I you... use that to climb out of the hole? <laughs> Heck yeah, you can. That's so dope. So you rob oh, this yeah. dude's shoes and then put them on, kind of in his face. You know, like your foot's like right over his stupid face. And uh, you put, put the boots of butt kicking on. They do. They've got like little spikes on the front so you can kind of like like glacier climbers just kind of like yeah. run up the side. It's fine. You know, Gary, Gary as you amazing. as you break the the cave line, you see you know Pickles and, and Dickens stretching his hand. You know, Roly Poly sh- shooting down toward Amaryllis. The moment is nigh upon you, but you <laughs> pop up and you see all this stuff going on. What do you want to do? Ah, oh, shit. I mean, in, in retrospect, is it cool if I leave a note with Tank? I'm like, <laughs> best wishes. <laughs> You have one on the go, you know. You're 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 a good, <laughs> proud of their Greenheart boy. Yeah. You know, you've got just like best wishes, condolences, Gary Greenheart, kiss, hugs, hugs, and green, okay. green. And Gary's, Gary, Gary, I want like Pickles to see Gary come out with his boots and just goes like, "That's a very weird cup. It is very weird." <laughs> <laughs> I, 
he's like, like how, I feel like how you say, uh, how do you say, uh, lethal weapon? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, yeah. I, I see that from Paladin <laughs> to walk out with someone else's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Listen. Two guys go into the hole. One of them walks out with the other one's shoes. You wouldn't expect you the to be that Shot one. in the water. <laughs> he used his shoes for for the worst reasons. I am here to preserve light. He had some real light stamping shoes, so it's true. I think you plus they're green. Mm, but no, I honestly from Gary, it's like, well, you gotta take them away from the asshole. Like True. Take the hole away from the ass, and then there's a lot then less shit. But a salient point, my friend. Thank you. Wow. But I think that Are you a butthole surgeon. <laughs> um, a buttholeologist. What's but, the? We've been getting into a but <laughs> buttholeologist. A butthole. Uh, yes. But a uh, a, uh, a mech anus doctor. Uh, yes, a mech. A doctor who speaks mech anus. Mech anus. It's canon. I can't do anything about it. That's that language's name. It's like you, you literally spelled it that way. How am I supposed to not say it? Yeah. It's mech anus. That's, that's, that's what it looks like. It's, I can't. I'm not. I, I went with you. We made it canon. That's how it's written. It's look, yeah. Rocky, I'm sorry. I, I wish there was something you, I could do. You're the one who wrote it. Not I was. That wasn't me. I didn't invent the language. It existed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the McAnus with extra pickles. <laughs> McAnus. I think we said it exactly how they thought we would say it. The pickles and the pickles. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do. All right. um, I want to keep the boots because I want to present them to Digby later, like once this is all over. Because nice. Everything Tank does is, you know, you get the wish version. Like That's it. Tank sucks. Wish. He does. So suck. I am gonna stow the boots. And because I have like a weird familiarity with uh, Dickens, his cartoon physics, like I felt it when he, That's true, you know, experienced in the previous battle, used me as a weapon to, to kill that Mykonid. <laughs> I want to go up to his hand and <laughs> try and blow it up to. So, yes. Get, even bigger. Gary and Dickens are blowing into the thumb to make it bigger, but like pickles again, like you don't really have like like your mouth doesn't connect to an esophagus. Like you have I some, so dang you have on. blood, yeah, and so you're just like. like I, want, I need to have one then too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plus, you know your lung capacity is trash. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> not want to be blowing into the ass. Fucking will do that. Mm-hmm. All right, so. I just look at the gang and I'm like, take a honk of this bobo, boys. <laughs> oh, we finally found it. That's the perfect use of honk this bobo. <laughs> Somebody write the time. All right, so, um, all right. The moment of truth is upon us. The first thing that you notice before this spectacle uh, re- resolves itself is the hushed silence of the crowd that has gathered as a giant hole from a burning rocket pierced through the chest of this vicious snake that would would have, you know, seemingly started attacking them. This same rocket that shot into the sky, expelled a giant light and shot a beam of arcing magic directly over the black iron gates as the body of a tiefling woman began to plummet from the sky. In this moment, Gary Greenheart, Dickens, and Pickles managed to stretch his giant cartoon elastic hand into a sheet, just as Digby's roly-poly catches the back end of your tail and starts fluttering. You all into the hand. Amaryllis, you feel like just a little bit of a push against your face as just a little bit of the motion has not been caught. You bounce off up into the air, about 10 feet, and fall on the dirt nearby. <laughs> the brunt of the 60 foot fall, not upon you, the you know the, the high dexterity, uh, or the 10 dexterity save that you had, um, you end up taking a sheer one bludgeoning damage. That would now, you were pretty low, so, <laughs> so that could yeah. have re-killed you again, <laughs> but no. No, but I, I look like I'm like Veronica Sawyer at the end of Heather's. Like, I'm like crisp 
a little a little burnt potato chip, am I? <laughs> you see you're laying there, you know, the fire kind of having burned onto your, your tiefling skin, but, but strangely resisted as if the egg itself yeah. was protecting you. Um, but in this moment, Amaryllis, although you've just gone through this like crazy everything, you can't help but, you know, have that one thought be drifting to the egg. It's currently, it feels safe but it is growing farther and farther away from you in distance. You can feel that inside yourself. You hear the <laughs> startled sound of just some farmer dude that's standing nearby, you know, thick, dark skin, just kind of puffy pants, puffy little okay. tunic shirt, uh, dirty hands from a long day's work standing there. You know, he's probably been loading bays, a hail bath onto these carts all day. And he's just standing like four feet away from you. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I just want to say that, like, my hair, like, it used to be really long, like, down to my ankles, but now it's, like, singed up, very stylish. Like a, like a, like a sweet, kind of like what you, you're rocking right now with your hot I hair. I mean, what? Who said what? Anyway. Just sound um, beautiful. beautiful. Last time was Brenna, this time it's all you. That's yeah. it. We're passing the haircut love around. I'll yeah. get a haircut soon. Don't make me do it. Let's shave our heads. No. Yeah, shave our no. heads. I am yes. not one of those people that has a cool head. Our hair in a pile and split it, gang. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, as long as I get some, some of Gus's hair beard, I'm in. Hair pile. Hair Yeah, it'll make hair angels. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Screw D&D, man. First? Let's just do this. Oh, my God. Hair angels. Hair oh. angels. <laughs> but boy, yeah. Hair angels. Uh, but yeah, I want to like, I don't want to be like aggressive towards this person who's very scared or anything, but I want to sort of address everybody nearby. An army, an army approaches. What? Hi. <laughs> the space queen has returned. Ah! You see, you know, the crowd sitting there just, you know, stunned silence. Like I said, probably about 15 people have gathered. You see a few more gathered on the road that were like looking in the sky and are now like, hey, what's that over there? You know, tank snake, the magic of the prestigitation kind of fading away as this little like bright Las Vegas arrow is just pointing at the snake. You know, they're like, tank, tank, what is, what? The, they have no idea how to take in what they've just seen. Well, um, and, uh Sound like. it, it looks like uh, you all just witnessed uh, or have been um, introduced to the helping committee. Right oh, hi. You see, all right, you see about half of them are like, Hello. Oh my gosh, that was spectacular. I've never seen anything like it. And like I said, that your cloud, your crowd is split about 50-50 right now. You see, old Sam is one of the first ones to be like, that was tremendous. Oh, and his big thick fingers. Remember, he has those sausage fingers. You hear him slapping over the crowd slow at first. And then the rest of the crowd kind of starts getting into it. But you notice that like about again, the other half of the crowd are all starting to like look around at each other like. What kind of dark magic is this? We, what, we're beasts. You say tank badly, but I see him not. What, what have you done? Have you unleashed? And you see the, the light over the wall. What, are, what is this? What, what are you doing? And you see again, like half of the crowd seems to be kind of like, wait, what the, what? they are not Sheesh. pleased at this. But about the other half, like, oh, come on, they they spelled this beast that would to do us harm. And but there is, yes, the crowd is kind of split right now. What do you guys do? Okay, I'm like riding this like crazy high, like adrenaline rush, and I, I feel like oh, insane and frazzled. Um, and I'm I'm feeling also like very in inspired. And um, how close am I to? Let me look at it. To yeah, pickles is right near me. I want to totally. just like come over. We are. We are here to help. We believe that our community might need some help. That's why we started the committee. We're the it, helping committee. We, and the Tank Badgerly released his snake pocket snake, pocket snake. And the, here it is. We literally killed it for all of you to protect everybody because- Pickles killed but it. But we all know the rule. If we do not eat it, it is murder. So please, 
I believe this would be a lovely addition to the festivities today. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yes. All right, I like it. We yeah, present yeah. this to the festival. Nice. Snake moves for everyone. The Save helping me. committee offering a a the beast of a uh, the, the the carcass of a large beast. Roast um, beast. As a symbol of courage. Because we believe it is something our community greatly needs. And flexibility. Like yes. a snake. You see old Sam kind of looking around at the group as, you know, this this weird hesitance. There's like a still quiet for a moment as everybody's like. Mm -hmm. And old Sam's like, oh, come now. Jeez. Look at who we have gathered here. The old Eggington boy, the Greenheart boys. These, mm -hmm. these boys are institution saviors of the town to be sure. And you see people all start clapping. And then you hear kind of this like high pitched voice that you guys are not particularly mm -hmm. fond of for the most part of Queen Quillbrook, the mayor. No. And you hear him like, what is, let me through, let me through right now, I say, let me through, let me through. And you see his little short, uh, he's a no, uh, pretty rare oh, yeah. uh, in this town. You see his white hair and a big white beard, little short reading glasses, you know, they don't have the stems, they just clip onto his nose. And it's all, it went, you can tell if he's mad so or not because his- glasses gave out, son. <laughs> <laughs> You see, With those uh, tiny things, you're embarrassing yourself. Like, Look at this, Look how fly my legs are here. They, they don't <laughs> fall off as easily. But he's like, let me through, let me through, I say. Yeah, what kind of commotion is this? What is, oh my word. And you see he's walking up in kind of a huff as uh, as he walks up. Gary, you know, your bandana goes up real quick and it's good enough. Again, you're, you're not dressed in the trappings of a farmer. He doesn't quickly identify you as, as who you are. And you see he's walking up. What is... What is this magic in the sky? Monsters in the street? Who is to blame for this? I seek to know. You see, you see, kind of like a couple people in the crowd are like, mm, mm, and they gesture over to you guys who are like, we are helping committee. Help the, help the, the committee. It's not me. I'm I'm part of the weed D and D show. I I don't know who these people are. I see the hat. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing your weed D and D hat. And they're like, we don't so have Twitch. Knows <laughs> who I'm with, who I roll hard with. That's how I roll, dog. Stupid. So yes, you uh, you you notice that Quain's like, Ugh, and he's looking around at the at the group of you all, like someone needs to pay for this. This is this is not the premise of today. Today is the opening day. How anyone can try to steal so much focus for themselves? It's disgusting. Oh, and to think, last year with Tank's tremendous efforts, we finally got a little bit of notoriety in this just whole town. Oh. Gosh, one day it I'll wasn't for us, Mayor. It wasn't for us. We were trying to preserve the opening day. Who the fuck is that? It's, you that? It, yeah. In the who bandana, who speaks to me? Who are you, boy? Someone who was a witness. But huh? the snake was the cause of Tank Badgerly, who what? was trying to upset the ceremony. We fixed it. No need to thank us, but you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. You're Is welcome. that Esmeralda? And what of the fire in the sky? How could Tank Badgley be to blame for that? I've never seen anything like it. Bad tidings. A red light in the sky. That is said to be the calling of demons. An omen. Every single thing is like a bad thing. Do you right. ever unclick the straw? Jesus Christ. Look beyond the gates. I... I there's there's an army approaching, and beyond that, I I I can't even describe. I don't know what. This is, you, this you see like his, his eyes shift as you say that, Amaryllis. What are you speaking of, girl? An army, I, you say? In this in this this flash of inspiration in this in this moment of the magic in the sky, I saw beyond the gates, and nothing good is coming this way. Gates are to open we bring tomorrow. to you the gift of courage to protect our community. Well, you see, he's like, I don't like it. The red light in the sky said to be an omen, ill tidings. Now, as an army gathers, oh, I do not like it one bit. And then you hear coming from the tunnel uh, nearest you, you don't have to like it, Quain. If my boy says it to be true, then it is true. And you see Digbag Molegington Jr., you know, Digby's father, comes walking out of the cave. Had you seen it, Quain? Digbag? This, this creature, 
Set, set to attack. Big dad. Set to strike upon these these poor souls gathered. You weren't here, Quain. They did all they could, and if not for them, many of us would have fallen. I sit on the council as well. I say they are heroes. <laughs> and then you hear one more familiar voice. I too, Quain, stepping from the tree line, Alyssa Nade, another friend hey. of yours, uh, comes standing, almost like putting on either side. She says, Quain, I have tasked these souls with the protection of something very dear to me. Perhaps we should gather the council and speak of your misgivings on this celebration day. You see, it's like... Dang. Hey, hey, no, stop that. More like Lisa Shane, am I right? Quit it. Stop. (laughs) Please, leave me be. Fine. But, Amaryllis, if what you have to say is true, then we must let them know. The opening must be stopped. An army, you say? This is what I'm saying. But... But the festival is every... <clears throat> yes. We, but, like, if everyone's going to die... <laughs> yeah, preserving, yeah. preserving life, I think, is... I, I suppose we celebrate that life as part of the festival. In winning the contest this year. <clears throat> look at the fucking... <laughs> look at the new haircut. How can you not trust that haircut? <laughs> Ah. Oh, it is true. Her her new haircut is most fetching. Yeah. When the, when the yeah, army so- knocks, we will just say no one is home. Oh, I like this idea. When you're right, you're right. I love Amaryllis's new haircut. Let's just fuck it. Let's go. Let's do it. I you trust see, in everyone. You see, Quain looks around at at, uh, at all the the members gathered around. He's like, take bag, Elisa. Hmm? If something comes to foot of this. It is on your heads, not mine. I wash my hands of it. And he, you know, gestures his little gnomish hands. You hear the clittering of a couple rings that he wears and everything. He, you know, he's trapped in the trappings of a mayor. He's got like a little purple cloak over him, a little golden clasp. Yeah, yeah. And he and he kind of walks off in a huff. Red beams in the sky, omen, they say. You know, going five feet, <laughs> and he just kind of just keeps walking off over toward where his little area is at. Um... <laughs> You see, Alyssa, you know, was was able to come nearby as as you see one of the uh, the fine elvish boats uh, promised by a Vivica Sea Fox uh, is starting to come down this river here. And you see, she's like, I heard the commotion and I thought it best if I came. Hmm. Hopefully, this day finds you well, Pickles. She looks at you, and you know, all the the heroes of you all gathered around. You see, the the crowd that's gathered there is starting to just hmm, yeah, start kind of grouping off to themselves. What do you think of this? They say it was tank. You know, you hear the, the mushed whispers of everybody there, but you're all kind of standing present. The commotion is mostly passed, uh, as now this kind of crowd just kind of stands a little ambivalently for trying to figure out what to do. Uh, we, oui. it is uh, Bean and Pickles gestures towards the snake uh, event, Phil. To say the least, uh, you should take some snake meat. It should be very delicious. Or uh, take... <laughs> yes, let's all bond over the snake meat. Yes. And we can discuss this new concept of courage in our community. Um, I also, I want everyone to know that this army coming, while they look really, really scary, they might not have bad intentions because I fear they're fleeing themselves. You see kind of, again, like, if, so if mention of the army was one thing, this, this spreading, like, Wait, what is that now? The, so the army isn't attacking. Uh, what? And then you see uh, I, old Sam comes. He's like, calm down, girl, please. calm down. You look like you've been through quite a bit. Everyone, calm down. Enjoy yourself a fine mouth of this snake meat. And you see a couple people start, you know, going about uh, pulling on. the rest of the snake out of the, the moist come hole on, in the air. Uh, and uh, they, you know, they start chopping it up uh, to serve, to, to, to give his offering to the... Uh, it's murder if we don't eat if it. If you don't eat it, it's murder, guys. Yeah. And there's already That's some seared meat does. pieces, you know, yeah. from the hole that you put through the snake's meat. Um, oh, God. Ooh, can I get a centerpiece? Jeez. Yes, yes right. absolutely. It's, 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 <laughs> everybody knows it's the best part. So you see Sam is kind of like, back off, give this girl some space. And, you know, he kneels down in front of you and he's like, I'm a Clearly... 
We need some clarification. What is it you saw, girl? Tell us. There are no enemies here. It was, I mean, it was all so frightening and it was such a blur, but I, I saw an army approaching and beyond that I saw, I, you know, I think I'd call it a blight. Blight. <laughs> a dark black clouds. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's not good. So you see this white wash over the face of old Sam when you mention the word blight. And he, he's like pale for a moment and he disconnects from you. The blight, you say. You've heard of this? I'll be right back. And he pats you on the head. He, he, he's like, he starts walking over towards Sam's provisions like he's going to go grab something. All right, um, later. So yeah, yeah, he's like, mm, but it, it seems like okay. he's, you know, he's, he's, he's not, he's not running the other direction. He's going toward where this place. <laughs> I'm in shock. I'm like processing. That. I'm eating my snake meat. So yes, you're all gathered around. You know, again, you see the groups of people standing nearby. Like, what's, this, what's going on? There's strange tidings. And then finally, like, Alyssa's like, don't you have work to do? You can't sit around and gawk at these, at these heroes all day. And they're like, heroes, yes. And like I said, through your actions, you see you've swayed a good majority of the group. Maybe a couple people still kind of look mistrustingly at you. But a, okay. a, the, the couple well, gathered them. walked off with Quain Quillbrook. Yeah, don't need them. It's fine. <laughs> Drinking through the bandana. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. It's commitment. Um, and so you see, you know, Alyssa's like, well, it seems the river t- uh, the rivers are rushing quickly. You know, her boat has kind of been like moving along this riverbank. And uh, she looks at you and she says, we shall see you then at the festival. Yes, uh, that seems you have quite an important message to send, perhaps a faster way than this winding river. And uh, finally, speaking up, Tarvin Tenderberry, the priest, uh, steps forward. You know, he's a little halfling. He's got green hair and a oh. green beard. He, he's the, uh, the head priest. Uh, mm-hmm. Father Tinderbury over here at the uh, at this this church of the Green Lady. You know, you, you okay. saw him briefly with his little pinwheel flowers that he prepares for the festival, and he steps in. He's like, "Perhaps I can aid there." Um, hello, uh, Tarvin. I some of you might remember me. Um, Tarvin, Gary. It's like Superman when he takes his glasses off. It's like, <gasps> Clark Kent! And he like runs up and he like gives you a huge hug. You know, he's a, he's not a stout halfling like you. He's a light foot halfling. So he's a, he's a little more slender than you. And he's not built for farm work like uh, like your broad paladin body. Um, but he runs up. He's very happy to see you. He's like, ah, oh, Gary, yes. Oh, you've answered the lady's call. I can feel it in you, boy. And he looks at the flower on your chest. And he's like, one of the green knights. And he places his hand in like extreme reverence on the, he understands exactly what this uh, change to your armor represents. The lady herself has blessed you. What? I saw her, friend. I spoke to her. I saw her. Oh, you see, you know, he does the, the, the ten of smooth hands prayer and drops to his knee. Oh, did she have a message for her followers? Oh, tell me, Gary, what was she like? as amazing as you would have expected. <laughs> but past that, like, even... <laughs> he kisses the earth at your feet, you know, the, the earth blessed by the body of the lady, so too to your religion says. And in a moment he sits up, oh, but look at me, concerned with my own aspirations, my own blessings. You seek to get to the gate as quickly as possible, yes? Oh, no, 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 don't be so hard on yourself. We just, we're trying to figure out... <laughs> What in the heck's going on here? I mean, I, I've heard talk of an army out the gates, and I you've always been a good consult and a good source of guidance for me. For me? For so, me. He says, mm-hmm. yes, I have prayed often recently, preparing for the festival, but I've received no answer from the lady herself. Mm. Just like her song has been strangely absent from my dreams. Mm. But now, looking at you, I see her. And I understand my purpose. And he puts his hand on you, Gary. He's like, an army gathers. A darkness spreads through the land. A red light arcs through the sky. 
He disliked the prophecy. Gary, I think the lady is in danger. That is why she's called your ilk. Oh, you must do something. You must... Oh, what's going on? And you see he's a little overwhelmed in this, Gary, but it seems he's putting together this idea that, like, wait a minute, there okay. are this, this ill times, like Wayne had mentioned, like, there is some saying that to see this red light in the sky and this encroaching darkness, it's like, uh-oh, things are about to get bad. Hey, can I just, you know, grab my shoulders a little bit? And... Okay, for one... What prophecy? It is It is said that when a red light lights the sky, when the growing shadow begins to spread, that the world itself may fall. That Queen Mab herself cannot stop what is coming. <clears throat> I thought it simply an omen. We all did. Uh, a, a legacy from the leftover days of the ill times when, when murders roamed the streets, far from the quaint savior days of Sartivan. But Gary, I fear, if what you say is true, if what the girl witnessed is the truth, many lives are at stake. You know, so it, it's been a minute, but um, now I'm part of the helping committee, and I'm gonna bring out the torch with oh. the, the glowing flame. And what we do is help, so we're we're gonna take care of this. Just make sure humble patch is, you know, do your best to make sure that the the town's fine. But stay humble, stay stay humble. You see, he's just kind of staring at. He's like, I shall of course bless the guidance of those who walk the path to humble patch. The great flame of the lady herself, and you see, he's just in awestruck in reverence. And in this moment, you hear the <laughs> thick feet of old Sam, you know, coming back through the trees. And he's got a letter in his hand. It's kind of crumpled up in his hand as he, as he walks up. And he looks around and he's like, go on, get out of here, shoo. I, if there's something to worry about, of course I would tell you. And they're like, oh yeah, old Sam, everybody loves old Sam. So they're, they, uh, you know, the people that have kind of gathered start backing off. They're like, okay. And they start getting back to the work that they have to do. You know, they don't know the finer details of what's occurred. Just, you know, this strange beast this offering this group of, of heroes uh, that has saved them from this strange creature summoned by Tank Badgerly himself. Um, you know, they all start kind of returning back to their to their uh, carriages and stuff. A few lingers kind of like, yeah, I don't know. This is weird. Like, uh, you know, they want to stay nearby. <laughs> yes. um, like, I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, it's, let's be real. If I was there, I'd be like, I don't know, guys. I'm hanging out. Yeah, yeah you see a dude that looks like me. He's just like, mm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm posted up next to that guy who looks like you. Oh, right? my God. And I'm like, I heard Alonza Quimpala was responsible for the red light thing. Bro, you lying. It's like, what? No way. Oh, you lying. Lying. I cannot prove that, that she did not do that. Yo, Cause where I'll... is Alonza, man? Right? Like, she should be Mysterious. here. Right? Mysterious. Mysterious. She ain't been around. That's weird. And he looks over. You see, he notices. He's like, well, they're loading carts over at Quinfallow Farms. Maybe that's where she is. Mm. Loading Carol. carts. Give me a deception check, Dickens. <laughs> oh, my God. Everything is a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you say? You said deception. Deception. Yeah. Roll for carts. <laughs> deception. Deception. <laughs> nice. Right. Hey. You see that guy's like, you know, I was always I always wonder why she goes out so late at night. Dude, you're probably right. Like looks yeah. at you. Yeah, and like, they you know never bring in groceries. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Sorry. <laughs> you just <laughs> shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Good distraction, Dickens. <laughs> Double Dirty 20s on my Double broken dirt. sucking gun. On that broken on something shooter. I wasn't even trying to do. Of course. <laughs> oh my God. I'll smoke to that. Mm. That would have been, mm. been crazy. I'll Holy smoke to that. Because now you know your next one's going to be double ones. I just um, love that idea. Of course like, I do. The town is calming down, and then Digby's like, ah! <laughs> 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 Sick! <laughs> 
Digby <laughs> Church is starting, like it does every Sunday. <laughs> All right, so you see, uh, you know, as you guys kind of gather, Sam comes, uh, Dick Bag uh, Jr., you know, your dad, he's kind of standing there. You see him, uh, he looks a little proud, Digby. Like, maybe uh, the commotion and all the stuff that Pickles was doing got him to catch, you know, the, the back end of what was going on. You see his glasses that you made for him as well sit on his face. You know, you help him see a little better as well. And so there is this kind of strange moment where you see he, you know, he came to bat for you uh, against the, uh, against the, 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 the elder Quain Quillbrook. And DBJ loves you. <laughs> and Thank so you, uh, you see old Sam, you know, comes up and he's like, we best gather around and close. You see Alyssa Nate is actually like, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to remove her, but she is like getting on that boat to, to go down the, the winding rivers toward the, uh, the ceremony, protected by the, the Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, you guys kind of like, Huddle up a little bit. You know, you're sitting there. There's this big snake that's kind of being cut up into serviceable, uh, bite-sized pieces, and uh, you know, you kind of gather around this 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 area. And you know, Digby, your dad is there, and so's Queen Quillbrook, or not Queen Quillbrook, a, a Tarvin Tinderberry, and old Sam. And he's like, oh, I received many letters from all over the place. Some I feel are just rumors; others have the stench of truth. I received this. He, like, rolls out a letter, inked in blood. You see, he turns this letter to you, and, like, indeed, it, is, it has been no ink that wrote this letter, but rather the red stain, the dark red and purple stain of blood itself. And it says, etched in this blood on this parchment, the, uh, the fell-sworn kingdom has fallen to the blight. And he's, he's, he says, I, I figured it some junior prank, some sinister mind trying to pierce our protective happiness here in Sativan that we fought so hard to sustain. I mean... I know not of your knowledge of the world around, but if the Fellsworn have fallen, then we must need fear this blight. Grayland Faragor, the Griever King, was the champion. He helped turn the tide when Mab sought the destruction of the races of the men. It is maybe perhaps through his influence that we have found this new balance of power twixt the fey creatures that control this world and we who merely serve upon it. But... I'm sorry. Who? Graylin. Faragor. No, I... As Drew, I know who the fuck that name is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, like I'm not- but basically he's like, he was a hero. So there was, you know, the, and again, some of you, if, and if, if any of you were like Path of the Sky, um, you would have some knowledge of this, but it's pretty, you know, uh, like you are understandably confused. Um, the truth of what's the politics of the world beyond you were kind of lost. And you see Sam realizes that. He's like, there are five kingdoms in this realm. And not all of them are as peaceful as Sativan. <clears throat> the Kush kingdoms to the north, the Indicus empires to the frozen lands to the far north, the decent dynasty in their inventions, Ooh. machinations, set upon a city of lava and glass. Oh. And lastly, the Fellsworn kingdom. Before, well, he looks at you all, well before your times. There was struggle. A hundred years ago, the Black Iron Gates were built by the Keen Indicus Nation to protect us as we feared the growing of the Blight. It seems our fears were warranted. Oh my god. The red light in the sky. The omens. We were fools to believe that we could have our peace. I see this slain beast beside you. I see the magic at your fingertips. And I fear the world is about to change. You see, that Sam has never been this heavy before. You know, he's always jovial, always laughing, always with a joke. And it's like he's reconnecting almost to a former life. Like even the quaint simplicity of the realm of Sati Van has, has withered away at his harder edges over all this time. And this, 
moment, this connection, this, this realization of the potential fall of one of the five kingdoms of men in the world itself, seems to be digging up some old ghosts. Well, I found, how do we help? You see, Tarvin finally pierces the silence. I believe I can help with that. Come, what? come this way, quickly. And he starts walking off toward the church. And he's kind of muttering into, you know, he goes through the trees and Sonata arouse your family's suspicions, Gary. He's no fool. Um, but he kind of goes through the trees. And off. So he's headed up toward, uh, he also stretches out a lot. Um, he's headed up toward the church. But he says he can help you guys with what's next if you'll follow him to the uh, to the, the church. Yeah, I'll run right after. Ooh, but... Ooh. All right. You start I wanna running on, off. I want to hop on Dickens' shoulder. Up there, yeah. you feel the... How crazy this this weird snake. Tank Banterly <laughs> made the weird snake. All you right. see that guy yeah, that looks like me? It's like, the yeah. Guy we're Screw that tank guy. He's a jerk. And then, Good and then he puts thing, on uh, disappears. So um, he, uh, vigilante sun punched that bitch ass snake through its call. Everything's good. We saved the day. We helped the helping committee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did that. We did that. Good did headline. That. Yeah. You see a couple, <laughs> the last of the folks that have gathered around are like, what a day. This, this is the craziest <laughs> festival <laughs> ceremony we've ever seen. We, and they start loading the snake, as you guys had offered, loading the snake onto the carriages to be delivered as part of yeah. the feast, you know, at the opening ceremony. So they've accepted right, your maybe. gift. And uh, like I said, probably, you know, all but uh, very few of the people in town, Queen Coolbrook's ab- amongst them, uh, uh, seems to be buying the story you're putting down. Like, again, you weren't lying about tanks. There was no yeah. deception check. That was a snake that he summoned. And nothing that he said was true. So, you know, it's, uh, you didn't have to deceive. Everything you've said to this point was true. <laughs> At least that we know. Yeah, I, I just like creating a little bit of chaos. So I, I start labeling the, uh, the, I start labeling it dragon meat as these people are like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, oh, yes, I have heard that dragons were long Ooh. serpents. Perhaps, you know, they all just start usually going to eat dragon meat, but <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's peasant food. Uh, it's more of a noble meat. I'm, I'm a peasant food. <laughs> so good. All right. So you guys kind of like rush through the trees over toward Tarvin Tinderberry's uh, church. You know, you see a couple of those spin, those pinwheels uh, on the grass field in front of the church. Uh, you know, they, they're like spinning a little bit. And as they pick up momentum and as the breeze cuts, you know, the soft, smooth breeze that always blows through the beautiful kingdom of Satyvan uh, spins their petals. They start like spinning around and then they take flight. They fly up and then land themselves. And you see it's like these flowers are dancing in this little garden in front of them. They spin up and then fall down and then spin up and then fall down. Ooh. And so it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a beautiful sight. And you see Tarvin like gesturing, you're like, hurry, hurry, quickly, quickly, as if he's just had this giant eureka moment. He kicks in the wooden doors of the church. You know, you see some dust specks. It's only a couple candles and it's pretty dimly lit. Um, you know, there's hay strewn on the floor from a lot of farmers come through here and there's a lot of smelly animal feces on their shoes. And so they, they, they have like herbs and hay on the ground to kind of absorb that and they brush it out. Uh, you know, every week or so, but it's you know, it's still kind of stinky under your feet as you guys kind of walk into the church proper. You see, the uh, uh, they're, they're dancing different, Tarvin. He's like, yes, the lady. Why didn't I think? And you see, he's like walking over to the the uh, to where his his uh, his like what is the stand that you give a sermon at? It's like an altar, an altar? I guess. Yeah, at the altar. You okay. see, he like walks up to his altar. And he turns and he looks at you and he's like, I was such a fool. I should have seen the message all along. And he tips the altar over. Wow. Rude. Now it's a falter. Yeah! <laughs> and you see beneath where he, where he placed his altar is this little like ladder. And he's like, Gary, quickly, we must this way. And he climbs down the rope ladder into this dark basement in the ground. Fuck yeah, let's fucking do this shit. Look at church we have in secret basements. <laughs> oh no. And I've got the start to like, wait, whoa, whoa, what way? Oh, uh, uh. He's like, quickly, Gary, quickly. There's a sign from the lady herself. Get in that hole. I didn't hear from the lady, but if you guys are down, let's go. Yeah, we live in the church hole. 
a wee in the hole. <laughs> With a mouthful yeah. of snake meat, you jump in the church's hole. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, you yeah. Yeah, pickles, you <laughs> land at the bottom. You know, you see standing there as Gary, as you go down, you know, the green flame, the ever burning green flame kind of illuminates it. It's this small little brick area, like almost like a basement that was under the church. And standing on the far side of the room as the green light flickers and illuminates the back wall, you see that the, the light spills upon this stone oh, flower that has this, this hand reaching out of it. He's like the lady herself. She said she was a messenger. Her light is the gift. Gary. And he gestures to the hand. He's like, hand. Gift the light of the lady to the flower. Do it. Do it. I can feel it. It is what is right. Gary, you stand there, the ever-burning torch in your hand. The the flower, you know, almost reminiscent of the flower granted you by the lady herself reaching out before you. Nobody yeah. else hears that. Yeah. yeah. Do we hear that? Uh, no, yeah, you guys are, you guys hear it. You're coming down. Everybody said they jumped in the hole. Sorry, was it no or yeah? Because you said no, yeah. Eh. No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, everybody jumped in the yeah, hole. No. So, yes, everybody hears this. Everybody jumped in the hole. Yeah, yeah. While, while yeah. I wait for my friends, I'm gonna like put it towards my emblem as a green knight, like just to see if the, the flame reacts before. You I... see the, the 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 tips of the rose start kind of curling and moving as if they were blowing in a breeze, and you see as the statue in front of you, the petals on the flower also begin flowing to the same breeze. Hmm. Summer breeze. Makes me feel fine. Baby. Baby. What do you what do you see, guys? Um sh shall we? Then I like approach the flame closer. You know, as you start moving forward and the light, the green light illuminated on your chest, the flower starts fully undulating to this larger breeze that you now start feel blowing around you as you get closer to one another. The flower statue in front of you shifts moving to match. And you see the hand, instead of rather reaching out, now begins to reach toward the torch that you hold in your hand, Gary. Mm. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Ah, that's funny. Turn it off. That's <laughs> weird. Oh. I got it back here now. Um, <laughs> it's like, what are you... What do you guys think? That that seemed unpleasant. <laughs> do you, you have a lighter? lighter? I have. What do you mean? I don't know. The 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 energies calling to me here are are they're not my favorite. I'm. Mm, I'd rather not. But I you're talking about the. I've been saying yes to a lot of things today, so I'm encouraging you to do the same. I'm just like... Okay. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 yeah. So, Gary, you, again, as you kind of move it forward, you see the hand outstretched, reaches forward, and it's the soft, feminine hand that grasps around the green torch. You feel a pulse of green fire. <laughs> And Gary, for a moment, you're, it's just like you alone in this ring of green light. And you watch as the walls all around you, the very bricks themselves, burn away in this pool of green, fiery magic. And you hear ah! this screeching shadow hand, like the one inside the Temple of the Ruby Maiden, reaches out to try to grab you. And in a moment, you see a confluence of green fire. Grab the black hand. And you see these two fiery black and green hands battling to try to possess your very soul. And that's where we're going to pick it up next time, guys. Oh oh would you not? Would you not? <laughs> wow. 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 Oh. Give me. Oh, fuck. I love Dungeons and Dragons. All right. Holy shit, dudes. Well, we do, like I said, we are working on ourselves on a little bit of a budget here today. Thanks so much to my amazing cast for even making this wonderful game happen. Thanks so much to you beautiful buds for being here. Just fucking, holy shit, dudes. What a fucking treat every single time. We do have us a little ritual we like to do around here. Maybe you heard about it. Maybe you haven't. We like to take a lighter. 
like this little uh, Pisces one right here, two little fishes eating some snake meat. Make sure we're not gonna light any of our friends, family, or household pets on fire or amaryllis, because we did that earlier. Yeah. And go light us up. <laughs> oh, guys, some good D&D was had. Mm. Remember, we will be dark next week. An early happy birthday to our girl, Dabby Andy. Oh my happy goodness. Mwah, we, will, we will be dark, but don't worry. We'll be posting all over the place. Thank you guys for all you do. Thanks to this amazing cast. Woo, play fucking d and man. Okay. Do it. Okay. You, you convinced me. me. Do it. <laughs> I'm listening. All right. You got me. You know, you got a good point. <laughs> Oh, yes. ha! So what? You can't touch me. Not from the internet. <laughs>